Life sucks, and here's the show. I'm the Revolver Man. Come together, this is Magpie. And I'm your foxy friend, Backlash. And as usual, it is time for What's Iron Sheik Tweeting Now? <clears throat> the Billy Herman, I meet you at the WrestleMania with my agent's page, Midge, and I love you, you intelligent Jew. <laughs> Oh, she, uh, you, you and your Jews. I'm not oh, even sure if Jerry Herman, Herman is a Jew. Jew. Sheik said he's a Jew. He's a Jew. Uh, well, did they, were they ever kosher in the playhouse when they had lunchtime? <laughs> Nothing in the playhouse was kosher, nor was it Halil. The toilet <laughs> would talk back to you. <laughs> I believe That's the shit it had to put up with. I, I personally believe that house would probably be declared satanic in nature if it was ever looked over by any man of the cloth. <laughs> so, wrestling show. This house is clean. <laughs> yeah, so we've kind of forgotten we're a wrestling show, so. <laughs> uh, well, hey, we're just like WWE then. We are an action soap opera show. <laughs> Yes, WWE, get the wrestling out. If you haven't heard, there are there is a list of banned terms in WWE now, and uh, wrestling is banned, match is banned. So you know, look forward to Entertainment Mania twenty eight. Fight is banned. Belt is banned. Pretty much any reference to you know. You can't say belt. No. Nope. What a fucking moron! Ah, he's choking Justin Roberts with that leather strapish thing that holds pants up. <laughs> with gold decorations and his name placed right on there. Yeah, it's going to be the gold leather uh, circle. That's what they're going to call it. <laughs> oh, my stomach hurts just hearing this. This, this is a throwback to that item of international descent age. It's that thing that gets passed around like every other month to one of the people we have working for us. Our general prop. Yep. All right. Kicking it off with uh, Monday Night's Raw from April 11th. Um, 2011. Yeah. Woohoo. Um, show starts off with John Cena coming out and. You, know, you forgot Michael are, Cole. Oh, fuck Michael Cole. This we don't care. He, he's in his little box where he belongs. <laughs> yeah. No one forgot to take the microphone out of it. Or throw um, tear gas in there while he was talking. Yeah. Well, it's got holes in it. It's ventilated. Yeah, uh, still, tear gas would hurt. Go on. Yeah. All right, anyway. So, uh, Cena comes out, and he's jaw-jacking about, you know, fighting the Rock at WrestleMania 28. Yeah, it's a fucking year later, man. Let's <laughs> focus on the now. <laughs> As as some people have pointed out, by announcing it now, The Rock can't pull out of it without looking like a major douchebag. I never thought of that. That's true. And with his schedule, it kind of makes sense. You have to book things a year out. But... Oh, no, I can't shoot Fast and the Furious 6. I have to be at WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't sh- I, can't sh- I can't shoot Fast and direct to DVD. <laughs> I, I was supposed to, supposed to take over Vin Diesel in the Pacifier 2. <laughs> no. Triple X, three, three X's? What? I can't do it? Scheduling conflict, you bastards. <laughs> the Pacifier takes on the Tooth Fairy and the greatest team up since uh, Yeast Met Vagina. What do you mean I don't have time in my schedule to film Tooth Fairy 7? <laughs> I need to get new agents. Where's IMG? I need to give that guy a call. <laughs> oh, Rock, I think your reputation just might possibly be ruined. <laughs> it, it's, not on, it, it's fine. It's just a, it's a black eye right now. It's not on Hogan level ruined. Hey, hey, hey. He hasn't made Mr. Nanny yet. No, Dude, no, he hasn't been on a tennis Ferry, center commercial. Tooth I think Ferry that's an accomplishment. His, I'm going to say Tooth Fairy is his Santa with muscles. Oh, but what's going to be his, uh, as game plan, said, game plan is Mr. Nanny. 
I was going to ask, what's going to be his Renaissance commercial, as Magpie pointed out? Huh? Scorpion King? The Scorpion King. He's doing commercials for Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> or Renaissance. Costco. <laughs> Walmart. Oh, just up, bring hang it on. down to Costco and oh. get a great deal on bulk items. Focusing on the now, though, uh, uh, John Cena cuts his promo saying, Now I have to win the belt and make this match better, and cue Randy Orton's music. I uh. want the belt! No, I want the belt! No, I want the belt! And then I cue John Morrison. John Morrison, or as we like to say, future endeavored. Yeah, please don't screw up your career. I believe in you, Morrison. He's already <laughs> fucked it up. You see what happens later on the show, you know we fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I, I stick with that theory. If we're talking about the same thing, which I'm pretty sure we are. Yeah, John Morrison comes out, then Dolph Ziggler with uh, Vicky Guerrero. Uh, I guess Dolph... She does something pretty funny here. She comes out and she's like, Excuse me! I'm going to the... challenge for the title! Just kidding, here's Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> it's the interruption Dolph... gauntlet, and then we get uh, our next surprise, Dolph which is our truth. I'm fired. Yeah, there's our truth comes out. Our truth. Our truth. Oh my god! Like he, he's still going for the belt. Wow. You guys, when, few months, he has not been on TV the last few months. Did you guys notice when they started peppering the guys out? Like uh, Cena got his obvious pop, uh, Orton got his pop, Morrison, and then everyone hated Vicky and Dolph, and then our truth comes out, and people are like, "Yay, yay! It's our truth." Where's his cheerleader? <laughs> Uh, oh, she's holding a meaningless title. Uh, yeah, we'll see her is, later tonight, though. Uh, refresh my memory. Is he singing What's Up or Get Crunked? He's back to What's Up. All right, he's all right. <laughs> and Cole immediately what's shits on this. And Cole immediately shits on this. Our truth. Ah, oh, I have so much problems with this guy. Michael Cole, racist? You guys decide. <laughs> well, we know he's homophobic, so racist isn't on the realm of possibility. He's homophobic? I've seen that ridiculous thing he wore at WrestleMania. No homophobe would wear that. Wow. Let alone get carried off by Jack Swagger like he was the bride. Oh, Swagger, take me away. Oh, 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 we don't need that. All right, for any collegiate level uh, amateur wrestlers out there that want to uh, take that issue up with Magpie, we'll have his address and phone number posted on the Tumblr site. Oh, fuck you, Tifus. (laughs) I do not 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 get to know if Jack Swagger is a bottom or a top. Well, you're the one who said that, not me. You're the one who brought it up. You're the one who said bottom and top. You're Jesus. the one who was talking about gay marriage. Listen, I don't need to hear about your oppressed sexuality. Let's just get on with the show. You're the one who brought up that time at summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so... Right, it, so they're it, all uh, arguing about, oh, I want the title, I want the title. Blah, 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 blah. Then and the email... This, this is oddly missing still. <laughs> um, you know... The Rock's not even involved, and he's still not even the center of attention when it comes to the title match. Um, so, the fucking GM chimes in. Oh, we're going to have a new style of match tonight. It's going to be crazy and innovative. And it's a fucking god. challenge it's anyone. Match. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, the match is set for later on tonight. It's a fucking gauntlet fucking mini Royal Rumble kind of match. It's stupid. You'll... It's... We'll get to it. Yeah. Anyway, we cut to commercial. When we come back, there's another thing for Awesome Kong. Which gives me so much hope. How, how would but, you... I, I, how how, how would... about we kill this hope, Magpie? Because up next, Rebella versus Eve Torres. Excuse me. Ah! Okay, I had to get out. Okay. Oh. Speaking, of, speaking of screaming when you say someone's name, Jarrett. Ah! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Fuck you, Davis. Eve. Okay, no. so we're okay. Very diff- so in this uh, so in this match we're treated to a title defense of a meaningless title against the Bellas. Oh, sorry, evil Bellas because they <laughs> frown. Yes, it's amazing how easily you can turn your alignment when you're a diva. Yeah, just switch up your uh, just switch up your wardrobe to darker colors and start frowning, and then say loser a lot. Yeah, I'm talking about this is like WWE highlighting their void of charisma black holes. <laughs> Do we even really have to talk about this? Well, well yeah, because because Eve actually comes up with a decent way to overcome twin magic. Uh, 
making one of them put an X and magic marker on her hand. But here's the thing about that. Why didn't the referee, knowing that these guys do that, just been like, hey, you, on the side of the corner, yeah, you, Bree, or whatever the fuck you are, get the hell out of here. No, leave. You know what? You know, he, he could do that. Then again, I would have taken advantage of the magic marker and made her do a Hitler mustache. <laughs> <laughs> God. And then when the network complains about it, just been like, what? It's a chaplain. <laughs> <laughs> no, technically it's called a fish broom. I know somebody who uh, works in the WWE watches this show, or sorry, listens to this show, and is like, here's my mustache. I haven't thought of that. And then we have Android to- magpie, everybody. <laughs> Danger. Danger. Shitty match. And now it's not doing it. All right. Um, oh. All right, so, yeah. Pretty much it goes down to uh, they try to do the twin magic, but Eve, like, makes sure the referee sees her hand, so she gets thrown out of the mat, the, the ring just in time for the other one to jump back in the ring and get the surprise pin out of nowhere for the title. Yep, so yep. the Breeze are going to win the title, and they're going to do the exact same thing uh, that Lay Cool did with the title. I, I can't believe this. Brie Bella is our Divas champion. Brie nope. Bella... Is our Divas champion. Guys, guys, Backlash, guys, guys, you're making guys. my brain hurt. Got a fucking... It's the last nail in the coffin. You know what? You know what? At, least it, at least it's not the women's title. No. You know what it's going to lead to? Awesome Kong eating her on a pay-per-view to win the title. And I actually been, and I actually been meaning to talk to you guys. How do you... Uh, if you were to book Awesome Kong, or le- like, how would you like to see Awesome Kong be booked in the WWE? Obviously, I think we share the opinion Eating that the Bella she Twins. I just said it. They, she has to eat the Bella Twins. Well, right, but like, what are the, like, what are the other divisions? Like, do you want to see that spread out? Like, should she kill like all the crappy divas who should um who are awful? Like, kill them first, and then as they get to the Gale, Molina, and Natty, those are the ones to give her challenges, and then that's the only one that can actually probably beat her. That's the way I like to see it done. I'd rather see Nadia. I'd rather see her come in and be like the valet for Sin Cara. That's <laughs> you know take it in a whole different direction. Well, if they ever decide to not to use her anymore, they'll probably just make her Mark Henry's valet or something. Yeah, Oy. which is my greatest fear, and I hope that it doesn't happen. Anyways, after that, uh, hire Viscera yeah. back, and they could have like the, t- the stable, big, beautiful black people. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <man. laughs> <laughs> it's funny, and I'm half offended at the same time. No, I'm kidding. And before No Leaf tries to fire me, my PayPal account's attached to the fucking Blip account. <laughs> Beat that bitch. <laughs> He's got the network. Oh, wrong show. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> ethics. What's ethics? All right. Um, all right. So we go to commercial. We come back from commercial, and <laughs> Eve is upset. Oh, and Gail Kim walks up and like tries to cheer her up and useless shit. Yeah, we don't care. Yeah. I keep hoping, when, whenever Gail Kim shows up, I I keep hoping, like, are they finally going to do something with her? And then, like, a week later, I'm like, oh, no, they aren't. So, that's it. I'm not getting my hopes up anymore. Sigh. Yeah. WWE, sigh. Sigh, next thing. Sin Cara! Yes! Sin Cara! Versus Primo Cologne, who's already out in the ring. You know what? I think this might be a small set measure to see what's coming. Yeah, but at the same time, though, for uh, him getting Primo getting the jobber entrance, he has some good offense on this match. I thought it was just going to be they're going to send Sin Cara out there. He does like three different moves that are spectacular, and Primo gets no offense whatsoever. But it was a well paced match. I mean, I think it did, except for that one botch, it debuted Sin Cara very well and showed off his athleticism. Yeah, yeah but that botch is going to cost him, though. <laughs> yeah, he had that very good match, but I keep hoping he doesn't get like the Ultimo Dragon treatment after that botch. I was just He's going about, to. I was just about to say, uh, well, he might not because this wasn't WrestleMania, but he could very well be going the that path of the Ultimo, which we hope that, that doesn't mo- happen. Well, after all the fucking money and the promos they've put into him, I, I sure hope not. Hey, this is Vince. Vince has no problem wasting millions to bury somebody. See the invasion. Doctor Death. <laughs> that that was not he was not burying Doctor Death. That was Russo's own dumbassity. Yeah, but he was the one that said, "Brawl, brawl, let's do it." Yes, but he was not doing that to bear. 
they legitimately thought that Dr. Death was going to win, and he got caught with a surprise right hook. All right, well, it was okay. It was just a stupid decision on a burial. Exactly. My apologies. Like, they, they learned what every MMA fan knows. There's no such thing as a sure fight. <laughs> I love MMA, but moving on to wrestling. Yes. Uh, to wrestling. Uh, there's another. Back, there's the uh, the beginnings of the promo. Uh, the beginning of the teasing of the Edge retirement. Yeah. This is really one of those moments, like, when you hear, like, Edge retiring, and it's like, wow, I did not expect that to happen, like, with, like, I expected that to happen in the future, but I put off, like, him retiring, like, way later. It's, it's very surreal. Do you guys agree with me on that? Like, just like oh, shit, Edge is actually yeah. ending right oh, now. Oh, very yeah, much he's, so. he's done. He's done. It's uh, real. Apparently, his neck is buggered again. Uh, yeah. I'm just glad that he was able to catch it and just, like... Fix it for now, so he's yeah, be be able to live his life comfortably. He's being smart, yeah. unlike another certain somebody that we'll get to later. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, we'll rip that guy apart. And also, I, I'd, I'd like to say, like, I was really pissed, and I think a lot of you guys were really pissed that his match was the opener at WrestleMania. Now I kind of get why they did that. I mean, if he could have put on a much longer, much better match, I'm sure he would have. But I can kind of understand. As, as, as far as matches go, go, that WrestleMania, his match was not short. Um, oh. I mean, it wasn't the it, it, core match, that's for sure. Yeah, but it felt like for a title match at WrestleMania, it should have been a lot longer. Hey, it's uh, like, that's um, that's kind of how most of the matches come off, though. They, they could have, for WrestleMania, they should have been a lot more than what they were. But, hey, it, know, was a lot, it was a lot better than the fucking uh, WWE. The what? Well, anyway, like on one hand, I get... Like, since I'm, we now know about his injury, okay, I get putting it in the front, but on the other hand, like, me being, like, me liking Edge, uh, I would have loved to see him, like, uh, close to the top of the uh, card, defending it, and just like, oh, I'm on the top of the card, I defended the belt, and now I can just retire as a champion. But it's bittersweet, because I see this as one way, and then I see it the other way, so, you know. Yeah. But, you know, for the last couple of years, though, he's been talking about retiring within a few years anyway, so... Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's his decision, and this is what he wants to do, and he felt like he did everything in his career, which he has a great career. Go right this, for this, it. This wasn't really his decision. I mean, he was thinking about it. It was something he was not opposed to, but mm-hmm. uh, health just forced his hand. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's all there is to it. But uh, okay. getting back to the show, though, um, yeah. we get uh, It's Cora time for stupidity. Sam. <laughs> yeah, the core comes out, it and they're talking about how fucking awesome they are, and all of a sudden, Santino walks out with Evan Bourne, Mark Henry, and Daniel Bryan. <laughs> name, five people you, name five people you wouldn't suspect to be in one stable. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I believe we missed something where the uh, core decides to jump the rock and Cena. No, that was yeah, they were talking about how it didn't. That was a uh, recap. We're not doing recaps. Yeah. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. But they're, they're, they're teasing some infighting within the core a little bit, but, you know. Um, anyway, they're, those four guys come out, and Santino's got the mic. Out of all four of them, Santino has the mic. <laughs> um, and he's like, you are the core. We'll take a look at this. We are Apple. And it's like, wow. The and you thought the name the core old. was dumb. You know what? Santino is now the tall horn swaggle to me. I think he's. I think it's awesome. I, I actually got into that, and I kind of wish they keep the, the whole Apple stable going. <laughs> Just the, the problem is, if they do, Carlito's going to sue. Yeah, fuck Carlito. <laughs> my, my hope is if they do this um, stable for the long term, like if this stable is just made to defeat the core, that's fine, and then they break up. I just don't want the this stable to just stay as it is and slow down like Evan Bourne's career and uh, Danielson's sl- uh, solo career. I don't want it. That's my oh, only come fear. On. Uh, Magpie, I have to hold you there. How the fuck could you slow down Evan Bourne's career anymore unless you literally made him come out covered in hog shit and called him a farmer? Well, I'd like to see an improvement. Like, okay, we didn't use him that much. Like, we used him, but let's push him to be a good singles guy. Uh, let's, give him, let's push him for the U.S. title. I want to see a rejuvenation. I want to see that guy get... Magpie, when, when you get you when you become a billionaire, you can book it the way you like. But for now, we got to stick in reality. Well, actually, if I become yeah. a billionaire, buying Canada and burning it, but that's another time. <laughs> well, wow. well, I I kind of like the fact that it's Kidding. actually been quite a while since we've actually had a real babyface stable of guys, hasn't it? Yeah, um, it has, hasn't it? 
I really can't. Uh, maybe the Hart Dynasty, if you count that as a stable. They're technically a stable. Just two guys in a valet, but I don't know. I'll count that. But that's the closest we got for God knows how long. Maybe, you know, DX was a tag team. But that, yeah, that's probably about it. You don't really hmm. get too many stables of good guys. Uh, it's mostly a bad guy thing, so they can use the numbers advantage kind of thing. Mm, true. Yeah. But, um, you know, at least it's not like that other promotion in America that's the number one wrestling company in North America right now, <laughs> um, where the bat, the good guys, despite not forming an actual stable, are too stupid to even put their differences aside just to get the better of the bad guy stable for at least one night. Wait, let's, res- let's reserve that shit for another night. Uh, Anyways, uh... Jarrett. <laughs> ah! <laughs> So yeah, uh, Santino, Born, Henry, and Daniel Bryan come out, and uh, they job to the core. Yeah. Uh, well, in one hand, I'm glad the core showed dominance, but after the WrestleMania, the short match, it's like, and then yeah, if you're trying to have two guys, hmm? and then getting beat up by two guys the following night on Raw. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? The cores. Anybody who lays down for the Cobra, in my opinion, no longer has credibility. So the core no longer has credibility for me, even before the Rock Cena crushing of them. Oh, you, you can't hate on the Cobra that much. I mean, it's... I, I honestly don't understand the hate towards Santino for that kind of stuff, because that's his character. And it's and it's over. It really is. And if I, there's anyone that can have a comedy gimmick that gets over it for the long haul, I think it's going to be Santino. Well, he's already got it for the long haul. He's been doing this for like two years now. And he had two IC championships and a tag title. <laughs> the yeah. honky. Remember the honky <laughs> meter? Yeah, he's like the illegitimate cousin of uh, Sakura Hiroto. <laughs> if you don't know who that is, look it up. She's fucking hilarious. Do it. <laughs> oh, look. Uh, so, yeah, right. Well, Magpie, you obviously need to stay longer for the after shows. But anyways, after that, uh, the core does more teasing of the breakup that we'll get to on SmackDown. Gabriel and Slater are all buddy-buddy, and Barrett's just kind of on the outs with everyone. Wait, they're breaking up? No! Damn! Hey, 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 at least Barrett can take pride that he uh, lasted far... Well, he lasted with credibility far longer than the new Nexus did. Yeah, he did. (laughs) Uh, But anyways... It took it, four people to destroy the core. It took Randy Orton no pressure at all to destroy the new Nexus. Even and we'll get to them, too. <laughs> yeah, they come back. Uh, but we'll oh, a segment that should have ended at WrestleMania. Well, uh, I think CM should have gone over at WrestleMania, but that, yeah. that's neither, neither oh, here. No, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about this other segment that should have ended at WrestleMania. Ah, uh, <laughs> go on, Tethys. All right, so... Um, Jerry Lawler is supposed to face Jack Swagger tonight, and if he wins the match, he gets to pick the stipulation for his rematch against Cole. If Cole wins, he gets to pick the stipulation. No, 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 no. If Cole, uh, it was, Swagger wins, get... Cole gets to retire undefeated. In his... Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Who so, cares? This sucks. Hey, uh, yeah. hey, it gets Jim Ross got, out there. Yeah, we got JR. It's pretty much quiet the entire time. Unless JR comes out with a chainsaw and then gets through the coal mine and then uses it on Michael Cole, I don't care. Wait, wait, wait. Wouldn't he have to use a pickaxe if he's going through a coal mine? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> but then that's just semantics. But yes, Jerry Lawler versus Jack Swagger. <laughs> and this match... Ugh, God, it was so boring. It was King versus Swagger. What do you expect? Swagger, who I like. Anymore, I that's not about what you're going to get. Part. Swagger could have done a lot more. Yeah. But he noticed anyway. when he lost and he did the up close of him, he was doing his best impersonation of Don Knotts, shocked. <laughs> He's like, what? Oh. Swagger face. Anyways. This match was complete with more uh, copyright infringements of Kurt Angle. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, I digress. Jerry Lawler wins. And after the match, he's celebrating with JR and Cole gets in Swagger's face looking pissed off and like they start bickering and Cole and actually over. slaps Swagger. <laughs> it wasn't even convicting slap. It was, like, it wasn't even a slap. it was just like, Swagger, I'm mad at you. 
Ugh. <laughs> Take that, you mean brute. Yes, and then Lawler announces that his match will be a tag match with Lawler and Ross taking on Cole and Swagger. Because if there's anything I want to see, it's JR with Bell's Palsy in a match. I mean, you know, no disrespect yeah. to JR, but come on, guys, this is like Hulk Hogan in a back brace level match quality. You know, no, was, I, Hulk Hogan I, doesn't I, have any spec. Jim Ross does, so he can be in a shitty ro- match, and j- people will still love Jim Ross. Well, Hogan, on the other hand, doesn't have that. Well, ignoring that, why didn't we get to see Jerry Lee Lawler get? Why didn't we get to see the match? Is Jerry Lawler gets an assault rifle match? That would have worked too. But, you know... Or, or Cole starts with a bomb tied around his neck match. <laughs> <laughs> like Battle Rail? Exactly. Yeah, so, so uh, Cole and Swagger are pissed at each other. And... Although, in, this will come to a weird head on SmackDown later to, uh, later on the show. Oh, you don't know, worry, guys. Those two will have awesome makeup sex. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Anyway. Thank you, Magpie, for making sure I don't sleep for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> You're welcome. Anyways, we get a hype video of uh, Undertaker and Triple H, and, well, there's nothing more that needs to be said about that match. We had to recap it, and we know it was qual- it was a good quality match. I mean, it happened. Let's move on with the current. So, uh, in kind of a aneurysm moment, moment, we see Edge talking to John Cena, and they shake hands. Aww. <laughs> because it's not like I've tried to murder you, Cena. And it's not like, not I, like tried... I tried to drown you, Edge. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I tried to shoot your girlfriend naked on public TV. I mean, that was just, come on, man. I mean, we're cool it, now. It's right? not like I tried to ruin your career in the WWE. It's not like I threw you in a, in a filthy, filthy pond. I mean, it was river, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, it's, once again, if it doesn't, if it hasn't happened in two months, it never happened. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, you can kind of forgive it, though, because the whole thing with Edge retiring kind of breaks kayfabe in and of itself. Yeah, that, so. yeah, it's it's pretty clear that they're not doing this, like, sh- they're, they're shooting, but they're doing good shooting, I guess you could say. Yeah, it's appropriate. I mean, yes, it's very... This guy's giving it all, his all in his ring. Literally, very he's left his health in the ring. Oh, that... And, and, you know, I, do, do give him have... a proper send-off. Old, rival, old rivals, when they retire, they become friends. That's Apollo Creed and... Rocky, come on. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Oh, I do have a comment, though. I am shocked to hear that Edge is an 11-time champion, considering he won his first one just, like, five years ago. He's had nearly two reigns a year, on average. Yeah, but most of them were kind of fairly short. True, but still, it's like, wow. He, he got close to flair territory in five, in six years. He's only too shy of Triple H. <laughs> That's incredible. That's kind of a shame that he didn't reach that. Well, he's a, he's also got the record for most titles held in the WWE period. Oh, that's true. Uh, yeah. He, isn't he like a fucking 85-time tag champion or something? Damn near. <laughs> if, if you've been on the <laughs> roster and you haven't held the tag title with Edge in the last 10 years, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> well, they, they said it. It's like 31 titles, but that includes like WWE, World Heavyweight, Intercontinental, and Tag all together. He it's a it's a shame and that he, never, he hasn't once. won. It's a shame he hasn't won the uh, U.S. championship then, so he could. Come but he's not American. <laughs> no, he, no, he did win the U.S. championship when they um mixed it. Then they have a, a match where they retired that belt and just like uh, put it together with the IC belt or That's something. Right. Oh, yeah, I I just, just, oh so, yeah, the WCW U.S. championship. Yeah. Does that count? Because if it yeah, does, that would count. we can close enough. Up. It counts. We're count. counting it. That, yeah. that means that Edge is a complete champion. He's held so every they, they count The Rock and uh, Jericho as WCW champions. That means that Edge has held every title WWE has had to offer him. Except for the European. No, nope, he won that. He's won well, that. that was already combined before him. Are you but sure? He I'm pretty sure he's like, like, God, he won that singly. I, he had to have won that at some point. I mean, they, they didn't combine that with the IC championship until like 2002. Well, uh, until proven wrong, I'm going to say that Edge is a complete champion. I'm going to go with that sentiment. Good job, Revolver Man. Thank well, you. Even if he hasn't, he's already got way too many accolades to take anything away from him anyway. Exactly, exactly. So, we'll get um, to that later, though. Yeah. 
Uh, back um, to commercial, Josh Matthews is joining Lawler and Raw. Okay. But it's not that, but that leads to also Edge coming out, and well, as far as it's been determined, this is completely real. Yeah, if um, we're not really going to talk about this too much, just because you know our words can't really give it justice, mm-hmm. and we've yeah, already seen it. Go that, look up the video on WWE.com. Yeah, it was truly, it was uh, a go. sincere speech. He meant every word. It was great to see. He was on the verge of tears the entire time. Mm-hmm. I know. That's right. This, um, this is a Mac. You know, I also want to say, I really applaud Edge for. He clearly doesn't want to retire, but he's smart enough to retire. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I'll admit though, I'm one of those guys who I'm sorry to trample over you, uh, Tavis. I did for a long period of time. I did take Edge for granted. Uh, I mean, I told you the story where he was at the Wrestling Union weekend, and I walked right past him and didn't even bother to shake his hand. But um, how dare he, you? He's one of those bad, guys. Bad, I, bad, well, just when I pegged, like, oh, you are fired. I don't want to bug him. <laughs> I to bug him. He was having dinner. No, get off the show. Go to the anyway, gym. Anyway, going on though, you. you're not you're not a part of this anymore. You're done. Uh, Up uh, yours. Go smoke uh, a pipe. <laughs> but um, uh, no, he, <laughs> he's one of those guys for me. Just, I just when I would pick him as boring, he would always do something. And all right. Uh, anyway, uh, for for yeah. me, you know, he, he's been around since a little bit before I got into wrestling, and you know, he like you said, he's always just found a way to reinvent himself right when he needed to. Uh, he's been able to help keep other people fresh, like John Cena. Uh, uh, John so, Cena's career was basically saved by Edge back in uh, 06. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, Edge provided mm-hmm. him the, the appropriate heel to play off his character against. Yeah, yeah, after fucking three months of Kurt Angle doing every damn fucking thing he could to get food and being loved for it. So, it, 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 he's done his job. Yes. Um, he was pro- he's one of the few heels that can still keep doing his job when he needs it. Yeah. So I, I think it's appropriate. Um, he goes out on top. He, he's one of the few people that gets to retire as a world champion and vacate the title. Which good for him. After his career, he deserves to retire. Exactly. But something I have observed, ever since Vince screwed Brett out of the title, you know what it seems to be all the Canadians get to retire with the title now? Trish, now Edge. <laughs> Uh, you're either going to retire a champion or you're going to die from painkillers after they release you. Oh. oh. What? It's true. Uh, let's it let's to move go. on, people. Let's move on. Contenders got this match. Randy Orton oh, boy. versus Dolph Ziggler versus John Morrison versus John Cena versus R. True. Also, hold it. <sighs> I, I lost it. Yeah, pretty much this match consists of two guys start, and after so long, another person gets entered in the ring, kind of like the Royal Rumble. But instead of being an over-the-top rope challenge, you have to pin each other. But it's not six people in there, so it's not a six-pack challenge or anything. So, um, yeah, there you go. That's the match. Uh, We start out with uh, Randy Orton and Dolph Ziggler, and the new Nexus comes out. Sans CM Punk, it's uh, McGillicuddy, Otunga and Mason Ryan come out and just beat the shit out of Orton. And uh, Ziggler takes advantage and eliminates him. I, I honestly guess that the new Nexus and Orton thing is still going to keep up. You know, I thought they all got thrown back to FCW, but I guess Vince still has plans with these guys, but I don't really see what they can do now. Well, the new Nexus has been completely buried at every turn. Well, you know what? I think me, if they break uh, away and they're just their own entity... Minus like some established superstar, they, they still have a chance because I think Punk overshadowed them. Well, if they if they work it like they think Punk held them back, I could see them recovering. But if they go yeah. back with Punk, that's going to be the problem. But yeah, is that was me or does nothing end at WrestleMania anymore? Remember that's when shit ended. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, moving on. The next entrant is our Truth. Why are you in this match? <laughs> Wait, it gets, um, <laughs> hold it, because it's going to get even better by the time this match ends. Oh, dear God. It's it's Ron. The truth is you don't belong in this title picture. The killings. 
How so. fucking old is our truth anyways? He's gonna be a, like in, in his thirties. He's in his thirties. Because, he, because he he was way back in WCW. Like, yeah. He was in like, WCW, he was in WWF as K Quick, if anybody remembers. Then he did then he was released, went independence, went on TNA, became the first uh African American NWA championship, which is <laughs> wow, in the two thousands, that's how long it took. Congratulations. They still beat the WWE to that. <laughs> um But anyway, uh Truth eliminates Ziggler. <laughs> Sorry, Zig. And out comes John Morrison. I- I'll let you handle this, Teeth. It says you seem to be the most animated of us, and I believe this calls for uh, God. Yeah, okay. Out comes Morrison, and uh, so it's Truth, Morrison, and Ziggler in the ring right now. Uh, they shake hands, and uh, Morrison tries to get the quick pin on Truth, but he kicks out of it. Um, he... Uh, they both uh, turn on Ziggler, I think it is, right? Isn't that what happened? I don't know. A bunch of shit happens. Morrison tries to hit the Starship Pain and doesn't do anything. He misses. Um, and Truth gets the pin on Morrison and eliminates him. <laughs> this is what happens when you snub a legend, Morrison. <laughs> this, this is, is what really, This, this is, is your just desserts. This is what happens when you decide to stick with your core of a girlfriend. Morrison, you... I knew what was going on, so that means oh. it's not cheating. It's like, do you approve? It doesn't matter. I knew what was happening, so it's not cheating. Morrison, you are just... You are quite possibly the dumbest man working for the WWE right now. You are, dude. You were in... Knows when, uh, you know, Matt Hardy position. tries it, and you were in Carlito top tries it. Position. It doesn't work in your favor when you fight the company publicly. Man was in top position. He was in the title picture. He had a five star match with the Miz on Raw. And what the fuck is he doing now? He's acting like a spoiled brat just because they don't want to push his girlfriend. It's unbelievable. This is this is the kind of shit that goes on in TNA. And and I don't want to see Morrison in TNA because he deserves better than that. And how many how many years has Melina been on the main roster anyway? And she's still pissing people off. She's not going to learn. That that's the amazing thing. Melina, he she doesn't do anything. She doesn't bring anything to the company. She pisses people off backstage. I have to believe they keep her around simply because she'll fuck the guys. You know what? And I I used to be a pretty big defender of her up until this WrestleMania fiasco happened. Oh. Melina. Please, you're one of the more talented women there. You can make it to the top if you just apply yourself. Yeah, don't say, oh, Tr- Trish took my spot. Pouting doesn't work in this business. No kidding. Especially not among the women who, well, it might have changed now that Triple H is heading uh, talent, but when Johnny Ace is around, you're seen as replaceable. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is with that, you know, she... You know, to go towards the women on this thing, she tried to say, "Oh, I wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it because all of us could have had that spot." It's like the Bellas, Eve, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> uh. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint, sweetie. Your title match against Eve got pushed to fucking Raw from a pay per view for a reason. <laughs> well, let's just say wow. that. Nobody will be buying pay-per-views to watch your retirement match against Lita there, uh, Melina. No, oh, maybe Ariana from uh, Tough Enough will, but that's about it. <laughs> oh, Melina. The, she's Holy the future. Shit. Anyways, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, the finals of this is John Cena versus R. True. Ah! Uh, Hello? And, 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 and in and a that, WrestleMania repeat, they go to a double disqualification. <laughs> because The Miz finally appears on the show he's a champion of, and they attack both of them, forcing it into a triple threat for the title at Extreme did this, Rules. Did this suddenly become TNA all of a sudden? That is the same shit they've been doing for months! Fucking months! 
Did, I don't have a problem with the triple uh, threat, but they just did the double disqualification at WrestleMania. They just did, you know, everything in this match. Why is our truth in here? Why is no? Uh, I, I I'm not okay with this. I am sick of these double DQs during number one contenders matches. No, I'm I'm done with I, it too. I mean, they're doing it way too often. Dusty Rhodes is not on your booking committee anymore. <laughs> Why are you doing this? So so we get the. Uh... We get the GM, and we find out what our pay-per-view is going to be. All right, so it's going to be The Miz. Awesome. Versus John Cena. Cool. Versus R-Truth. R-Truth is headlining a pay-per-view for the WWE Championship. And this isn't like the Elimination Chamber where there were like five other guys, so who the fuck cared? This is... Uh, oh, he's being put on the same level as John Cena in The Miz. <laughs> I mean, I don't well, care what your opinion of The Miz is. He's high fucking up there because he's they got a lot of faith in him. Honestly, I believe that this our truth is getting the push Morrison should have got, and he's be, and that's part of Morrison's punishment. Is that our truth is getting his push? <laughs> I, I guarantee you, Vince is in the back, just like. He's talking to John Morrison like, oh, you see that down there? That could be you, but it's not. <laughs> if we learn today. <laughs> you know what? I have to agree with that. I could totally see Vince doing that. I'm sure you could too, Tifus. Oh, my God. Anyways. Uh, so I don't want to imagine it, man. <laughs> so that was raw. <laughs> it ends with R-Truth getting a title shot. <sighs> Anyways, uh, so, Tough Enough? Anybody watch that? I did not watch Tough Enough. I, I did, but I don't really care to talk about it. Sum it up real quickly. M-Dog 20 got eliminated for not doing his flippy shit to impress people when the only people he had to work with are people that don't know how to, you know, handle that anyway. So, all right, so that was raw. That was Tough Enough. Uh, Revolver Man, any final thoughts on those? There's not much. Yeah, not really. Though, hey, I think we lost somebody, Keithus. Shit, we did. Backlash. You're here, yeah, right? Well, yeah, I'm here. Where the fuck did Magpie go, though? Oh, God. I think the finish to Raw broke him. Well, it would break most people. You know, our truth <sighs> does that. Uh, well, I get we can't carry on with just three people. That just breaks up the, the formula we've got. Exactly. Who do we got on tap here? We can add to this thing real quick. Let's Oop. see here. Uh, no, uh, no. Oh, she's a no. girl. We certainly can't let her on the air. Not yet, anyway. I o. Suffrage has not happened yet in dark match. <laughs> <laughs> not allowed to vote. Oh shit! Oh, ladies and gentlemen, surprise entrant for the tough enough finalist. Our very own producer Ali is going to join us. Here comes I the never challenger. Saw tough enough. <laughs> that's okay. Well, that's done okay. We're we're tough enough. Smackdown. Yeah, fuck tough enough. <laughs> You're the tough enough champion Smackdown. anyway. Yeah. All right. You're tough enough, Ali. Let's do this. Yes. All right. Tough yeah. Ali. Ali, start us off with tough enough. I didn't watch tough enough. No, Smackdown. Smackdown. Uh, <laughs> all right. Damn it, we botched his entrance angle. <laughs> I blame the finish <laughs> to Raw. Let's just keep I didn't going. watch Smackdown <laughs> either. So, we'll do it live. We'll do it live. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, uh, we'll kick it off here. <laughs> Shit. Uh, they, they begin with a look back at Edge's victory over Del Rio at WrestleMania. And this segment is brought to you by the official snack of Dark Match. Del Ritos. But you now, already knew that. Now in Cool Ranch. Way cool ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Uh, we'll get to Lay Cool later tonight in the most weirdest way possible. And brand new dessert flavors. Dark chocolate, white chocolate, and Brodus Caramel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat it. <laughs> I believe I believe that I believe dark chocolate's been renamed our chocolate. <laughs> 
produced exclusively in Oakland, California, so you know it's failed USDA health inspection. And cocaine. <laughs> so we have all our delicious flavors of Del Rito's coming to you soon, but for right now, we must talk about SmackDown. Uh, anyway, so uh, when uh, basically Alberto kind of has a weird promo, in my opinion, at least. Yeah. Uh, comes in talking about his destiny again and and how he's the, the hero of the WWE universe in the locker room. Oh, wait, he, about how they lost their hero. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Um, and Edge is retiring in that since he was the last number one contender, he deserves to just have the belt handled to him, handed to him. <laughs> Who do you think you are, Triple H? Great way to get yourself over as a... As a heel, that actually is a good way to do it. I mean, that's 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 classic. You know, he, he, he's he's the entitled snobbish heel. I mean, yeah, he's, kind of he's Triple H's old gimmick. Like, it's unbelievable how much better he plays Ted DiBiase than Ted DiBiase does. It's unbelievable how many people on this roster are playing Ted DiBiase better than Ted DiBiase. <laughs> oh, Ted! Remember when they thought he was going to be the breakout star of Legacy? Oh, well, you were wrong, were oh. you? Cody Rhodes, the Genetti of the New Millennium. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cody Rhodes. Well, I once again more praise for Cody Rhodes for his ingenious way to work the pretty boy gimmick. Oh yeah, he's done awesome with it. But we'll get to him. Yes. Anyway, so, so uh, he expects Edge to come out. Fans are chanting for him, but it's not Edge. It's the Magnificent. It's a swerve. <laughs> Teddy Long comes up. Teddy Long no comes one saw up. this coming. And basically tells him, "No, you're not getting the title. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a twenty man over the top battle royale. So effectively, they're having a royal rumble to decide the second number one contender for Extreme Rules." That's not a bad way to do it. I mean, that's kind of like a grab bag. That's that works. Well, it definitely adds some nice variations and. Well, it it gives a bunch of people you don't normally see Chavo a chance to get out there and uh, remind them that they're still employed. Freaking, uh, both, both Chavo and Primo have been on TV this week. That is so weird. It's Where the like fuck is Jay Lethal. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be at Lethal Lock. He'll be at Lockdown. But for now, we've got Java Revival on WWE. <laughs> Take this chance while it lasts. Exactly, Primo. Well, at least Primo and Chavo will still get paid even if they're not on TV. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, Teddy Long comes out and announces that, and uh, that's pretty much that segment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, Teddy Del Rito in- ends it by saying it was Edge's destiny to end up like a crippled coward. He's mm. really doing a good job with this heel character. I mean, yes. I mentioned breaking kayfabe earlier, but... Um, Really, I mean, this is kind of Edge's way to help do the job to Del Rio on the way out, and I, I think it's beautiful. It's perfect. You know, the show must go on. Definitely, he's. So, and, and you know, and you know, they shook hands and hugged and kissed and all that stuff behind the scenes <laughs> with the camera turn rolling. Exactly, uh, but uh, as we go out, Teddy cuts him off, saying it's his destiny to shut the hell up. And then we're uh, we come back with Ezekiel Jackson and his second face in the ring, with the core at the announce table. Well, not really at the announce table since, you know, two of them are just hanging on somewhere else. Ezekiel, don't turn around, Jackson. <laughs> hey, thank you, Ali. That's a very good way to put it. Kofi comes out, you know, boom, boom, boom. They cut to a, per- a very white, redneck-looking guy trying to do the boom, 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 and it doesn't work. Very bland match from Ezekiel Jackson, but what do you expect? Only really noteworthy spot was when they... They fall outside the ring. He picks up Kofi and just chucks him at the rest of the core. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just a good match. Yes, I I enjoyed it. Kofi, it it, it could have been better, but it was fun for what it, for what I expect out of Ezekiel Jackson. Well, with Ezekiel Jackson, there's something I like how big he is, but he's not like steroid rippled like say Batista was. But he's a massive dude. Like, and he he doesn't come off like Viscera either, which is just no. fucking scary. But he has potential, know, but he needs to work on his mic skills, as we heard after the match, <laughs> because he got the fucking mic. And 
Could anyone even understand what the fuck he said? Uh, I think he said that the core is going to hate me winning the... I don't know. Oh, he's oh. Ahmed Johnson's secret son. Oh, that's just being... You know, it, do, it doesn't make sense that he can't work the mic as well as he should be able to, because you can see his brain poking out the back of his head. <laughs> well, maybe, well, maybe we need to, you know... It has to be free. It doesn't get enough air in there. If you cut his skin, it pulls out. He's going to be like brain. He's going to be like brainiac. And then that's when he becomes. Once he starts. I do not need to imagine that. (laughs) Yes. Imagine Ezekiel Jackson's brain pulsing behind his head. Well, anyway. (laughs) There's not much else you can say about this segment. (laughs) Yes. Uh. But there's plenty we can say about the next segment. Oh, because yes. it's Lay Cool's <laughs> couple therapy session. <laughs> oh. Okay, I have to admit, I love the fact that Michelle McCool's like, what on earth are we doing here? Like, it's almost as if they're par- it's almost as if WWE decided to parody the constant lesbian angles of TNA, and they ha- and they're ha- and they're having Michelle McCool <laughs> act as the straight woman. I, I, I think it's hilarious, though, because actually, I mean, everyone rolls their eyes at Lay Cool and, like, God, they're so annoying. Uh, that's the point. I mean, they're supposed to be, like, the odd couple, sort of, right now. and they're, they're supposed to be, like, the comedic group on the mic, but serious business in the ring is what it's supposed to be. Like, they're supposed to be a serious threat, but they're still supposed to be kind of goofy, personality-wise. Mm-hmm. I mean... They got most of their heat comes from when they decide to do that stupid let's mic them up while they wrestle crap that they did. I thought that was funny, especially since they didn't keep doing it, like just the one time thing. And they got their asses handed to them, so they got shut up in that one match when they tried to do that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So they're going through the couples therapy. Michelle McCool thinks this is a joke. Lay Cool is taking this utterly seriously, and I laughed at it. And they're playing it up on Twitter too. That's the funny part. I mean, if, if you go to if you go to their Twitter accounts, you'll you'll see them tweeting tweeting back and forth every now and then, and they're in character, and it's hilarious. We well, need to work. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't TNA. This isn't always shooting, brother. <laughs> but yeah, so they're they're griping about how um, like Layla mentions her Frankenstein foot and. Uh, <laughs> this segment was just fucking hilarious to me. But then again, I'm one of the few people on this show that enjoys Lay Cool, and always has. So, um, uh, they're they're growing on me. I have to admit, they are growing on me. I'm liking this angle there, and I'll say that much. And they kind of hint that uh, the goofiness in Layla's accent is kind of forced on Michelle nitpicking at her about it. <laughs> that Layla. accent, that weird accent of hers. Like Lay- Layla mentions Thelmer and Louise, and Nicole is like, it's Thelma! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they throw off the edge of a cliff. But since there's always <laughs> someone in this group that, whenever we watch the show, they're like, wait a minute, why is Layla speaking with a fake British accent? It's like, it's not fake, she really is British. Well, the, <laughs> well, the thing is, though, she seems to. She has a real British accent, but she's putting on a fake British British accent. Yeah, that's the funny part. I th- everything about it is just fucking goofy as hell. Uh, speak, but going from goofy to unbelievably well done, Cody Rhodes in the ring under the the, the black light, hiding his face, looking like Doctor Doom, being very fucking evil and menacing. Uh yeah, he he's he basically just goes on and on about how he he wanted he wanted vindication for his disfigurement and he and he beat Ray but he doesn't feel like he has it and he's like if I win the world title will that be enough? Very well done. Then you'll love my looks again. <laughs> uh, he, he's hamming it up too, and that's that's really what you got to do in this circus that is WWE. Oh, exactly. Like, you you got to push your gimmick to its limits and just be like, what the fuck? Did I really just see what I just saw? I mean, how many, <laughs> how many people rode off dashing Cody Rhodes until he made it work? Until the second segment that he appeared in. 
like the vignettes, like the fir- the first time you saw the vignettes, the first couple of them were like, why are we watching this? And then the third one was, it's like, you know, this is actually kind of funny. <laughs> Well, I wrestling is in a place for... Oh, crap. I, I just I mean, love that goofy smile he had on his face, like, oh, I have a toothbrush. Yeah, that's, 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 kind of, that's kind of the difference between people like Lay Cool, Cody Rhodes, and Santino versus people like DiBiase, R-Truth, and, you know what, I'll say it, Evan Bourne. You yeah. like eyebrow wax. Th- those last three are handed a gimmick that's kind of like Taylor made just for them. It's like it's perfect for them, and then they don't even apply themselves. They're just kind of like, I've got this gimmick. This is my gimmick. This is my gimmick. React to me. You're not reacting to me. Here's more of my gimmick. And then those other three people, Lay Cool and um, Santino and Rhodes, they're like, here's my gimmick. Oh my god, this is my gimmick. Ah! And they go nuts with it, and they really just fucking like they drop right into that character. And just ham it the fuck up. And well, that, that's one thing that so many wrestlers seem to forget about wrestling. There's no such thing as over the top in wrestling. Or too- no, there's really not. I mean, you can go push too far in your storyline. You know, <coughs> Katie Vick. <coughs> um, well, that but, was just Vince's insanity on public display. That but, wasn't you know, over still, that. still at the time though. At the, time, at the time though, I know a lot of people were upset by that and annoyed by it and think it's stupid. I thought the Katie Vick segment, even with the, the simulated rape, I thought that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> well, I, I admit I laughed very darkly when Triple H threw the spaghetti at the camera. I thought it was fucking hilarious. Like, everything about that was like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, That's my sense of humor right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we can can this is hilarious. Ha, 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 ha. We, we apologize for... Uh, our colleague Tephus's, uh dark sense of humor, and let me remember I'm, that he is defending your freedoms on the battlefield <laughs> for America. For America, I a shit. I'm Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I, I, moving away from that little <laughs> bit of uh, what the fuck? <laughs> we, <laughs> right after that one, <laughs> we have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know. Hey, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Composure. Composure. Okay, okay, okay. We have Ray uh, coming down to the ring to chase him off. And, like the, after that. and the thing that really stuck with me about this is that he hits a 619 into Cody's chest. And is that supposed to be like his death blow move and Cody's it's supposed mostly to knock just, people out when you hit him he, in the forehead? He just no sells it. Like he gets up. Go, Ow, my ribs hurt a little bit. I mean, that should have knocked the wind out of him. <laughs> I mean, he did get uh. disfigured. I will think it's exactly <laughs> the same, but. But either way, we, we, we cut to commercial after that and we come back to, uh, Rey Mysterio versus Drew McIntyre. <laughs> ah, Drew! What have you done with yourself? Well, this was actually a pretty good match, I thought. Yeah, it's just... Drew is no longer... Finally, there was a good match with Drew McIntyre involved. <laughs> uh, I mean, he, he's another case of... Uh, and I kind of blame uh, the backstage issues with his wife for this a little bit, but he's one of those guys that was handed a character. And for a while, he was doing something good with it, and then all of a sudden, he just kind of stopped. He was just kind of sitting there like, oh, this is my gimmick. And um, now it's like he's getting back on track. So... It's, that for what it's you good want. to see guys pull up from the tails, as it were. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, you know, he had to sit there and be in the doghouse for a little bit, but now he's kind of getting himself back on track. He's like, you know what, I can sit here and wallow in this, or I can show them that I deserve to be out of the doghouse. Exactly. So, and he's doing that. And I, I, I can see a bright future for Drew if he just, you know, drops into his character and rolls with it. So. Definitely. I guess we'll have to see, but anytime, yeah, yeah. I'm a firm believe I'm a firm believer that the more people that get over, the better, no matter who they are, even yeah. if they're Randy Orton. Yeah, and, there, and there's some people that'll say people like Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre don't have a personality, but they do. It's just not that whoa, 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 I'm goofy kind of personality. It's, <laughs> I, uh, did, I didn't I didn't realize that. your uh, I didn't realize that so many people's standards for uh, character was Pee Wee Herman. Uh, Cyborg and Highlander. Herman. That was that was that was actually someone I deployed with. Uh. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Oh, they give him a gun. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh um, my god. We apologize to the US military. Uh, don't. It's our fault. We give him a gun. <laughs> For America. I've been on the firing line next to this guy when we go out to the shooting range, and it's, it's scary because. Uh. Well, <laughs> anyway, this well, isn't my biography, so let's get back to wrestling. At least you guys can't hand out mini guns like Predator. Oh, that's the thing. He had a crew serve weapon. Oh, um, <laughs> he was on the convoy team. <laughs> uh, okay, getting uh, Keith's bizarre military experiences. That's which, for another show. Let's, which I'm pretty sure if he reveals too much of it, he could end up getting his ass court-martialed. Let's move. No, no, I couldn't. I just got to change the names to protect the guilty. Um, <laughs> Anyways, uh, Drew and Ray. And actually, not much to say about it. I mean. They both Ma- good match is good match. What what else can we say? Hey, SmackDown's on in Spanish. Maybe I could watch it there. It, it was it was it was a solid it was a solid solid match and uh, but, and really delivered. A bit of yeah. a side, but I have to say it's good to see SmackDown getting back into SmackDown rather than this being the Raw recap show. So, yeah, else, I mean, with me? The, the only real <laughs> recap stuff was about Edge and. I can deal with that. Right, but it, remember, like, leading up to WrestleMania, like, the, ma- the SmackDown after WrestleMania, it was nothing. Well, that, that's how it is. For, like, the last four weeks before WrestleMania, Raw is all fresh material, and SmackDown is all recap, and then the last two weeks, everything is just recap, recap, recap. And that, that's just leading up to WrestleMania. That's how it's always been. I know. I'm not, I'm not dogging on that. I'm just saying it's, I'm glad and, yeah. to see SmackDown back being SmackDown. Yeah, I mean, I mean there, there's a lot of people, like, pissing and moaning about that, and it's just like, guys, relax, this is not a permanent thing, this is what they always do, mm-hmm. this time here, and it goes back to what it was before, so it's it's fine. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, this this match was great, we keep saying that, and, uh, you know, moving on from the match, which was a pretty intense, good match for not really having anything uh, riding on it, mm-hmm. um, it's time for Booker T and Josh to talk about Edge. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Booker said he wrestled Edge at WrestleMania 18. I'm trying to. Yep. Was that true? I don't remember that match. What was? I, I, I think yeah, he did. It, yeah, it was uh, WrestleMania 18. They were feuding over the shampoo commercial. Oh. oh, oh, oh. The Japanese shampoo commercial, yeah, which that, we conveniently yeah, the, never saw, and when they translated it to the Japanese broadcast, was that American Jap- uh, American shampoo commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yes, now now I I can see why yeah. Booker didn't say the reason why they were wrestling it. Yes, for those of you not familiar, here's here's the setup. Uh, the whole thing was that Tajiri, if you remember him, was setting up this Japanese uh, shampoo commercial with I, I don't know if it was like his brother was a producer or something, and they originally picked Booker T, but the his gimmick was that he's acting like a drama queen, making all these demands, and eventually later on the show they're talking with Edge, and, and it's like, oh, you have such great hair, you'll be perfect, and then Booker T is like, oh, like oh, you you gonna pay, sucker, and <laughs> and they had a really good match at WrestleMania 18. We should actually watch that in the after show. I agree. You know, kind of an edge tribute. I have to agree, but that reminds me of the other great, uh, good match, but was premeditated on a really stupid reason. The infamous Kane Jericho, I spilt coffee on you feud. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fucking love that shit. I mean, that's another example of, uh, you know, you get handed a shitty gimmick or a shitty storyline, and you just make fucking gold out of it. Well, that was because Jericho had, so, like, I don't know if it was the SmackDown before WrestleMania, but he had this fucking hilarious promo where he was all of Kane uh, photoshopped through these various images and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's there's uh, the part where, I mean, and this is where the intensity really gets turned up on it. I mean, they had a shitty start to it, and they just ran with it. Jericho goes flying through a plate glass window. <laughs> and from that point on, I was like, man, I got to get into wrestling and I got to be the guy, first guy on WrestleMania to get slapped through a glass table. <laughs> that was my dream for about three years. Uh, but, you know, with, with, that, with the Edge and Booker T shampoo commercial, it's like, we're feeding over a shampoo commercial. I'm going to destroy you at WrestleMania. And, and you know what? I want you dead because of it. Yeah, it's it's fucking hilarious shit. It's like you, you can't all have winners, but you can. That doesn't mean you can't have fun with everything. Exactly. 
Um, so uh, they show some uh, scenes of Edge walking through the back and shaking hands with various people like Dean Malenko and Stryker and Chavo uh, Guerrero. Dean Malenko. And, uh, I, I'm it, surprised they showed him because although he's an agent. Yeah, he's, he's an a agent. very respected backstage agent. But most people, at least most fans today, don't remember him. Well, they're, they're, they kind of walk a fine line of uh, gearing it towards the new fans that don't know that backstage, that old stuff and still like throwing old stuff in there to treat the older fans and get the younger fans asking, who's that? And so then there's like people educating each other. Mm-hmm. I guess that makes sense. And it's always good to see Dean Malenko back on the uh, TV, even if he doesn't have that awesome theme song anymore. Wow, wow, wow. Walking around with like seven divas. <laughs> that was the best thing ever. <laughs> Inexplicably, I've got everyone's girlfriend hanging on my arms. <laughs> oh, you're not James so Bond, no matter how much the commentators say oh. you're the James Bond of the WWE. You're not. Do you have a golden gun? No, shut up. You know, as in, you know, after being completely treated like crap in WCW, you got to know he loved fucking doing that. Acting like the suave. Ladies, well, Playboy man. That's because he was doing something. <laughs> Even if it was on heat, he was still doing something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh yes, uh, older fans who might, or younger fans, I should say, who might be listening. Heat used to matter. Yeah, Sunday Night Heat used to matter. Kind of like superstars should matter. You should watch <laughs> it whenever you get the chance. Uh, well, not you, 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 see, you see some funny, non-important stuff, but it's still good stuff. Like I remember one heat where there was the feud between for a one night feud between fucking Kurt Angle, the champion, and Crash Holly, and he had a title shot in that show, and it went to like it was like a twenty minute match. <laughs> I, I mean, but, they were seriously acting like fucking Crash Holly could win the championship. But, you know he yeah. wouldn't, but. They had us convinced for a moment. <laughs> but yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're digressing again. Um, Ali, you want, the, you want to take this next part? About the Superstars comment, it'll be on the right. internet. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Look it up. YouTube! <laughs> YouTube! Uh, YouTube! Anyways. What do we do? What's next? Anyways, right. uh, um, after yeah. one of those stupid did-you-know WWE factoids, we cut back to Edge making his way to the ring with uh, Tony Chimble's voice actually starting to break as he announces for the last time the Rated R Superstar. Rated R Superstar! Thank you, Ollie. <laughs> That's about how it sounded, too. I shouldn't <laughs> laugh at that, but Ollie, you make me laugh. Yes, you, you, are, uh, you are a very good producer, Ollie. It's good to finally have you on the show. Yeah. What am I producing? You Damn it, don't ruin it! Don't so, break kayfabe, damn it. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, we got a few people sitting in on every call, and they kind of feed us lines every now and then. We run with them. So. Yes, uh, we're not as inte- we're not as funny as you think you, we are, and God. It's all in the delivery. <laughs> exactly. It's a work. <laughs> it's, a, it's a total work. Yeah, so anyway, um, Edge comes out, and, uh, you know, it's another good little speech, and you guys got to go online and watch it. Uh, he, does, he recaps his uh, career again in a different way instead of talking about the people he's had a few feuds with, talking about some of his accomplishments. So, um, you know, TLC, his match with The Undertaker. Um, it, it, was, it was another very touching speech. And um, he finishes it up, and as the fans are chanting, thank you, Edge, uh, he puts the title belt on the turnbuckles and walks up the ramp one last time to come out to his music one last time and they do that for him and um, that's pretty much it it was, it, was a, it was a touching moment and this is where we learn that Edge has won 31 titles in the WWE and we've actually been uh, confirmed he never did win the European title oh that's such a disappointment and in the last five years 21 times yeah <laughs> so um yeah he uh, leaves the belt in the center of the ring, and that's he goes over and gives his mom a hug, and she's at ringside, front row. And uh, that turns it. on him. And we get a nice segue into WWE's next movie, 
That's what I am, featuring Randy Orton. <laughs> and it's With usually, one whenever, line. Whenever we see uh, the new trailer for the new WWE movie, we're always asking one question at the end. What the fuck is this movie about? <laughs> uh, well, you have to go and see to find out. Like, if I recall, Randy Orton only appears for like three seconds of the trailer, and it's like a fucking two-minute trailer. Yeah. I'm Randy Orton. And, and most of it's taken up by uh, Richie Cunningham's illegitimate offspring. <laughs> and, I, I guess it's an anti-bullying movie, which means... Yeah, that's, well, that's there's, what it is. Like three, there's like three different things going on. Like, the first part is like a coming of age, this young kid, and he wants, like, he's going to get the girl or whatever. And then it segues into like, oh, your science partner is this really tall, goofy-looking kid who gets picked on all the time. And it's like, oh, I gotta understand him. And like, oh, it's about friendship and all that nice shit. And then it's like, hey, the teacher's having sex with one of his students or something. Yeah, that was... And his students are all, like, 13. Yeah, like, that was kind of a fucking out-of-nowhere moment. Groovy. <laughs> and then Randy Orton I'm shows up. up. Good vibrations. And, and then, we re- then we discover that uh, apparently... WWE has hacked the Nickelodeon computers and stolen all their plots. Because the title of the movie, I can't remember what it was, That's What I Am? That's What I Am. Was written like it was a fucking Nickelodeon special. It, it feels like a uh, the rolling uh, Legendary and Tooth Fairy and Knucklehead. Sh- the Chaperone all into one movie. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they steal the fawn from Saved by the Bell for Bobby Lashley's old Titan Tron? <laughs> I think they did, yeah. Oh, that's... Wow. Damn it, WWE. You see, this is... <laughs> oh. And as we, as most of you probably know, WWE is abandoning wrestling as fast as they can, and apparently that's what I am is going to spearhead this effort. Because yeah, it's, it's only featuring a uh, superstar in a somewhat minorish role. It's well, not as far starring. as I can tell, he has Randy Orton has a bit almost cameo part. Yeah, I am Randy Orton. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, my son is the bully in this movie. This is it for me. Bye. Are you supposed to be acting? See that they make it so that the really weird, tall-looking kid grows up to be Randy Orton. Yeah. But um, we go back to uh, Edge walking through the backstage and saying hi to people and says hi to Rosa Mendez, and she's, like, uh, being kind of sexual towards him almost. (laughs) Um, Kind of an awkward moment, because as far as I know, he's still married. (laughs) Uh Maybe maybe his current wife has realized Edge is just going to be Edge. Yeah, kind of a reverse Morris and Molina thing. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, at least he, Edge won't ruin your career. Well, his career's already over. There's not much left to ruin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you he, know what he, I mean? He managed to to not let it ruin his career. <laughs> Well, In fact, if you if you remember correctly, it kind of elevated his career. I was just about to say, him sleeping around was a good thing. Yeah. Like, so if you, you think about it, he life. kind of did sleep his way to the top. Oh, oh, oh. Proud. Right in the middle of the ring on a live broadcast, too. Yeah, that actually got WWE almost banned in Canada. But he turns around and there's no, one no cares about right Canada. in space. And uh, Del Rio offers his hand and Edge just walks away. Oh. And it's just like, <laughs> I'm so awesome. But you already I didn't that. wash it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Anyways, and we got, uh, <laughs> the it's Disney Kelly movie. Kelly versus Layla. Hooray! Some, some you know what? You mentioned that backlash and I was just about to say how much you can tell the difference between how much fun we have talking about this show as opposed to Impact. And then you go and mention this. <laughs> Between Kelly Kelly, Layla, and Michelle McCool, these are three divas that have really elevated their game since they joined the main roster. Uh, I have to, I have to agree with that. From I mean, Ke- I mean, they're, they're, they're not. I mean, Le- Layla, I think the most. Uh, Michelle was already pretty good when she started out, but she still elevated her game a lot. 
Well, but... Kelly, Kelly, she went from being unable to take off her own bra to now. Yeah. That was her but... first segment, ladies and gentlemen. Her failing to take off her bra on ACW. Yeah. But if, if you remember back, though, and I'm not going to say Kelly Kelly's on Trish Stratus level or ever will be. It's, I, mean, I don't know. I'm not saying she's not going to be. I'm not saying she's going to. But she has. Where, uh, where I, she and Trish Stratus started out is pretty much the same place. Eye candy on the outside of the ring, and they kind of learned how to wrestle. And I, will say, at it. I will well, say she has the potential to be mediocre. Oh, I think she already is mediocre. I think she has the potential to be at least, you know, a convincing wrestler. She can be uh, decent. Yeah, she 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 could be convincing. Like if she if she it's not too late for her to really apply herself and become a, an actual like championship material or anything like that. I'm surprised they haven't put the title on her already. <laughs> they put it on the freaking Bella Twins. Yeah, uh, that that kind of shocks me. And in fact, I would have been I I the first thing that blew to my mind when Brie Bella won the Divas title is uh, Kelly Kelly hasn't held this belt yet, and you're putting it on her. <laughs> um. And that, that's, you know, like I said, I look at it, that's kind of an insult. That's kind of not an insult. It's kind of a compliment. But my comment, my line of thinking is they're putting it on the Bella Twins so they can have Austin Kong come out and kill both of them for the title. Yeah. That's my guess because I really can't see any other reason why they want to. Get, yeah, it's I, a I, I, guess, I can see a uh, handicap match in the future just to emphasize... Yeah, Kong's like, dominant for the Bellas. Oh, total like double choke slam. I could see her breaking out a double choke slam on those two. We have something to look forward to at least. But unless they decide, <laughs> unless they decide to have Brie Bella completely squash Awesome Kong. Yeah, that. Yeah, uh, but Russo's not. Uh, Russo is remind eight. me of things that they're willing to do. Yeah, but just remember, Johnny Ace isn't running the show anymore. It's Triple H, and he's smarter than that. Yeah. But Anyways, uh, so if the match ends with uh, Kelly Kelly winning, and once again, I don't know if this is the finalized breakup, but basically, Michelle McCool pushes Layla around and is unhappy she lost again. <laughs> and then uh, we go back to commercial, and the You're recap. the reason I suck. And then the reason is Charlie Lawler being swagger to set up a tag match. And, <laughs> and you got to look. The whole thing about this was Booker T at the announce table. It's like, Cole, how stupid can you be? Hitting up the man who's supposed to be helping you. <laughs> I love that echo. <laughs> Why was my idea of Cole starts with a bomb around his neck match not fucking put into this? Oh. God. I don't know, but Cole, Cole apologizes profusely to Jack Swagger through the camera. And it's like, oh, I need you. <laughs> You're my everything. But, uh, so we start the main event. The number You are the wind beneath my ring. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> somebody get me some milk. Oh, damn you. <laughs> you, you. <sighs> you know what? Oh, you know what the God. amazing thing is? For all the fucking avoiding we are, we actually enjoyed this show. It was a good show. Uh, mostly <laughs> because it brings back, it, it kind of forces you to come back to these fond memories, and that's the way it should be. Exactly. I hate the fact it's a good show. That means we had nothing to complain about. <laughs> Yet somehow we still have worked uh, almost two hours out of this. So, yeah. Um, uh, number one battle, uh, battle royal contender. Here are everyone who's in it. The big show. Kane, Justin Gabriel, Heath Slater, Jack Swagger, Wade Barrett, Brodus Clay, Christian, Ezekiel Jackson, Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre, Yossi Tatsunui, Kofi Kingston, Rey Mysterio, Tyler Rex, Chris Masters, Chavo Guerrero, Kirk Hawkins, Trent Barrett, and TGG. Does that mean there's two Kofi Kingstons? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, Sigh. Basically, nobody you care about except Christian. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, so... We missed it somewhere, but somewhere in in this, uh, all the stuff, backstage stuff with that shaking people's hands. 
he uh, came face to face with Kane and shook his hand. Oh yes, we forgot to say that. I I, yeah. I don't know how he missed that, but yeah, it was didn't it. You, didn't you kill my father? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the yeah. fifth time he's died. So I mean, I, I, I think I think Kane's kind of numb to parental death at this point. <laughs> he's gonna get back to being buried in concrete. I think he could survive that little fall he took. Yeah, no kidding. He, he's been hit by a truck. He's fallen off cliffs. He's uh, been burned alive. He's been buried in concrete. Uh, Kane burned his own, or Kane had his own uh, other parents burned alive. So I mean, it, just another day in the life of Kane. Um, <laughs> you know, if when they do Kane's retirement, they should do it completely comedy, like him at like a fucking uh, psych where they advise him to finally retire so he gets away from Complete with Weird Al overplay music. <laughs> Do you have the time to listen to me whine? Do, 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 do. Oh, and the ghost of Paul Bear just not slowly. <laughs> yes, have the ghost of Paul Bear just, like, stare at him intently for thinking of retiring. Yeah, it's not going to be a Kane retirement unless they bring Tori back. Oh. So I give it one last hug. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, nope, they're going to... Nope. <sighs> You know what the final retirement angle is going to be? They're going to reveal Katie Vick wasn't killed. Yeah. And so Kane marries Katie Vick and they leave happily ever after. Yeah. Book and it. they get by a truck. <laughs> 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 and everybody go and everybody shrugs and it's never mentioned again. Uh. uh anyway. So. Uh, um, yeah, like the most, match. Like most uh, over the top battle royals, basically every undercarder is thrown out in the first ten minutes or ten, five minutes. I mean, but well, pretty much everyone gets a spot. Yes. I mean. So, uh, if I recall, uh, the final four was Swagger, Christian, Ray, and who else? Justin Gabriel and Justin Gabriel oh, Masters. actually turned on. Masters was down there. Oh yes, Masters was. So, but okay, yeah, we, we, we do got to mention that though. We do got to mention that though. The core was not cohesive at all in this. No. Yeah, Justin and, Gabriel, he he threw Wade Barrett out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. And, and, and he and, and he was the last core member in there because uh, Zeke got eliminated by Big Show, who eliminated himself in the process. Um, did he walk over the top rope? No, <laughs> no. He, uh, Damn. he clotheslined Zeke and just went with him. So. This was a bad idea. It, it, it's incredible how often you know. It's incredible how often that happens in an over the top, isn't it? But I immediately regret my decision. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, basically, yeah, it was Christian Swagger, Justin, and Rey Mysterio. But yes, freaking Chris Masters was one of the final six. Uh, I think he was tossed. Nice. I think he was tossed by Barrett, who was then tossed by Gabriel, and that's how. Yeah, we that's what happened. Yeah, it was a it was a pretty good uh, finish once they got the jobbers out of there. Yeah, so uh, one of the one of the more funny spots was is that uh, Jack is Swag- uh, uh, Jack Swagger was set up for the six one nine by Rey Mysterio, and then all of a sudden, fucking Cole jumps out of the mine. And then covers up Swagger, so he takes the six one nine on his back. Rats and he his... sells it like a mother too. Yeah, he, <laughs> sold, he he did not get he did not get up until the cameras turned off. Yeah, he I was mean, he was down for the count. And he took it on the back too, and it was funny because when Cody took it in the chest, did you just say Cole took it on the back? Yeah. <laughs> well, that is. Well, that move does disfigure people, so. I mean, well, it, it ranges from disfiguring people to slightly bruising the rib cage without causing any serious injury. I was just about to say, Cole didn't seem to mind it very much when he uh, got hit in the chest. Yeah. But Comes back with a chest protector. What did you do to me? <laughs> if he comes out with, like, fucking bronze breastplate, you disfigured my abs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, eventually, by that point, he's going to start looking like a fucking gladiator. Cody anyway. Rhodes, the gladiator! <laughs> but yeah, we get down to the final two, and it's Christian and Jack Swagger. Mm-hmm. And um, Del Rio gets involved and uh, is holding Christian on the outside, trying to help 
Swagger eliminate him, but... Wait, 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 wait. We, no. forgot, we forgot to mention Swagger is fucking through the ropes ankle lock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, this weird fucking... He had him up to his chin in the ropes trying... It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen somebody try to do, and... But it was again, effective. It did work, but once again, it shows that Chris uh, Swagger has no idea how to put on the ankle lock. He how is it that hard? How do you not, you know, I mean, that's that's all that move is. Grab ankle. And twist. Do nothing. It's just his wrist Ugh. into it for some strange reason. So mm. as a twist, it's still effective. I guess, but he's going to hurt himself in the long run. But, yeah, Del Rio comes like, out. Like Angle never hurt himself in his career. Come on. <laughs> well, I hope, some, I, I hope somehow I, he'll end up hurting his own ankle while doing it. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, but I'm just hope. well, we can always hope that Swagger doesn't need his little daughter to fucking inject drugs into his spine so he can get up in the morning. Oh, no, my Achilles tendon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, it fucking, uh... Guys, I'm gonna have to retire and bank, uh, relinquish the title because I hurt my wrist. <laughs> uh, so, let's, let's try and get to the finish of SmackDown. <laughs> don't, yes. don't... He he comes in trying to pull Ray, pull pull uh, Christian off the apron, and it doesn't work. Swagger goes for like a clothesline. Christian pulls the ropes down, and Swagger goes right the fuck over the top, and right into Del Rio. <laughs> and you see all three guys, including Cole, just fucking dead on the apron. And then they get hit by a truck. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That that's the end of the match. Christian is the winner, and we'll face Edge comes Del Rio. Out to yeah, they Edge comes out to celebrate with him, and uh, it's going to be Christian and Del Rio for the world title. Never so, see that happen in WWE, did you? <laughs> you know what? I think I think Christian's going to go over. I hope he does. It's about time, really. You know what? Either way, I don't care who wins this match. The, whoever wins, it's going to deserve it. Yeah, that's true. This is kind of a. Unless they go for a double DQ. Uh, How do you do that in a ladder match, though? <laughs> they both grab the title, so they're both champions. champions. Or they do what hap- Or they do what happened with Hardy. Then they drop it, then they have to put it back up. <laughs> Be like every TNA ladder match or X Division match. Also, Remember also when they both dropped it and pull it down? I barely took a bump and it shook the belt loose. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so ultimately, I think WWE was pretty good this week. Yeah, it was. It was fun to watch. Yes. Like, uh, in, in the moment, you, you see things, you're like, what the fuck? But then you look back on it, you're like, ah, yeah, I, okay, I get it. So it's funny, and you know what? Wrestling needs to be more funny sometimes. And, like, good funny, not Russo funny. Yeah, well, I think that's all we've got for now. Um Shall we finish with a game of uh, what gets more screen time than Jay Lethal? Sounds good. All right, I'll start us off. White men who can't dance get more screen time than Jay Lethal. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The shampoo angle between fucking uh, Booker and Edge gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. Oh, shit. The door frame. The wrong show! Um... The Ghost of Randy Paul Bearer. Appearance in That's What I Am gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. But just by <laughs> a bit. Just by a tiny bit. Yep. Dean Malenko gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. <laughs> Paul Bearer. Our, <laughs> Paul Bearer's dummy gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. Paul Bearer's ghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the dark match. I'm the Revolver Man. I'm Tifus. I'm your fox friend, Backlash. I'm Clone Magpie. Oh. Ooh. Damn, Alan. <laughs> Good night. What's your real name, motherfucker? <laughs> Say it. Say it. I can't. Say yes, it. Yes, you can. <laughs> I'm Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and that was the dark match. Uh, good night and good luck. Have fun.